Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about Google Docs and we will be focusing on some skills that you should have in order to use Google Docs with students in your classroom. In particular we'll be talking about creating a document, adding a table, editing the table properties, adding an image, cropping and adjusting the image, and adding hyperlinks to Google Docs. Well, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you're logged into your Google Drive. Once you're logged into your Google Drive, then you're going to want to browse to the folder in which you're going to want to create your document. Once you're at that folder, go ahead and click on the New button in the upper left hand corner and select Google Docs. Then, one of the first things that I always recommend people do is name their document. I'm going to go ahead and create the basics of this document, so I'll pause the video while I do that. Okay, so this line here says there are a number of very common passwords and you should never use any of these. Well, I'm going to go ahead and list probably about 30 of those passwords. And in order to do so, I'm going to want to create a table to put those passwords in. So let's go ahead and insert a table. First of all, we go up to click on insert and then go down to table. Well, I know that I've got about 30 passwords that I want to put in this table. So I'm going to go ahead and count over six rows or six columns. I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, and notice that when I get to the fifth one, another one is added, six, and so forth and so on, which will allow you to continue to create larger and larger tables. And then I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, it continues to add rows as I get lower and lower. Once I've got my six by five table selected, I'm going to click. And right where my cursor was located, you'll notice that I now have a 30 cell table, six columns by five rows. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while I go ahead and insert those 30 very common passwords that you should never use. Okay, so now I'm going to have a look at the table properties. I'm going to right click anywhere in the table and scroll down the pop-up window and find and select table properties. That will allow me to change the color and the thickness of my table border. I can also change the cell background color, the vertical alignment. It will also allow me to change the dimensions of my table, including the column width and the minimum row height, as well as the cell padding. It will allow me to choose the alignment of my table left, center, or right. And I'll say that this table is going to be centered in the middle of my document. Now I'm going to click OK and notice that the border on my table has changed, corresponding with the properties that I've chosen. If I wanted to add a row or a column, that's really easy to do. Adding a row is the most easy to do, especially if it's at the bottom of the table. I can just simply click in the bottom row and then tab over and as soon as I get to the end and hit tab one more time, a new row is added. I can do a similar kind of thing for the column. I'll put my cursor in the final column of my table. I'll right click and I'll choose to insert column to the right. That will put a column on the right hand side. Now if I did need to add a row, perhaps above the second row here, I could place my cursor in that second row, right click, and ask to insert a row above my current location. 
Well, I didn't actually need to add any of those rows or columns, so I'm going to also show you how to delete those rows and columns right now. I simply right click and I select delete row as long as I'm in the row that I want to delete. Again, I select in the row I want to delete, I right click and I select de delete row. I'm going to also choose to place my cursor in the last column, right click, and I'm going to select delete column. If I wanted to delete the entire table, all I'd have to do is right click in any one of the cells and select delete table and that will delete the entire table. Now if you hover over the border between any given set of cells, you can move and adjust those borders so that the data in your table will fit nicely. It takes just a little bit of practice working with tables in Google Docs to get the gist. In reality, it's not very complex and the tables are relatively simple. For the next part of this video, we're going to focus our attention on images. So I'm going to go ahead and insert an image to the right of my title here. I'm going to go up and click Insert, Image, from Drive, but I'm going to tell you that normally I recommend that you find the image that you want and save it to your Google Drive first. I also recommend that you place that image in a file folder called Images. It will help make you a lot more organized in the long run. So again, I'm going to go ahead and insert an image, insert image from my Google Drive. And I'm going to choose this one. It is in my recent folder, but I'm going to show you that I'm going to go to my Drive and select my Images folder, and it's in my Images folder, nice and organized. So then I'm going to go ahead and insert this image by double clicking on it. It's a large image, so it's going to appear large on the screen. If I click on the image, I can hover over any one of the handles on the side of the image, and I can resize the image. These three buttons at the bottom of the image allow your image to be in line with the text, allow your text to wrap around the image, or the image will actually break the text. Well, I'm going to select Wrap Text for this particular image and I'm going to move the image over to the right-hand side and allow the text to appear on the left-hand side of the image. Again, I can continue to resize the image until it's the exact size that I want it to be. And I can also choose to crop the image if something about it isn't quite working for me. I select the image, and then when I do, watch the toolbar up here change. I'm gonna select the image, and the toolbar changes, and corresponds now with all the options relating to images. In this case, there is a crop image button right here that I'm going to press. And then you'll see that the handles now have bars on the inside of them. If I hover over any one of those bars, I can choose to click and drag and that will crop the image. So if I select off of it, click off of it at this point in time, you'll notice that the image just got smaller. I'll do that again. So I'm going to select the image that brings up all of my image options on my toolbar. I'm going to select crop image and now I'm going to hover over any one of those bars and drag, click and drag to lower it. Then I'm going to click off the image and the image then gets cropped. If there are other aspects regarding your image that you need to change, you can click on the Image Options button at the top. You can change the size and rotation, and this is where you would then rotate your image. You can rotate it 90 degrees, 180, 270, or 360 degrees. Or you can change the image rotation any number of degrees that you wish by clicking on these up and down arrows here. We've already gone over the text wrapping options for the most part, and there are additional options here for you to choose from. Under the Position tab, you can either choose to have the image move with text or fix the position on the page so it doesn't move ever at all. 
You can choose to recolor your image in a variety of different ways if you would like to be creative. And I can choose some other adjustments, including transparency of the image, brightness of the image, and contrast of the image. If I change any of the image adjustments and don't like it, I can always click the reset button at the bottom of the adjustments panel and the image will be reset to default. If, however, I want to reset the entire image to the way it originally came into my document, I simply have to click on the reset image button at the top. Now, if I've made any changes in the image size, that won't have any effect on it. As you can see, it just reset its aspect ratio and took away the crop that we had originally done, performed to it. I can add a border to the image and I can change the border color along with the border size. There are many times when it may be advantageous to be able to insert a hyperlink into a Google Doc. I found this website here that I think would be great to link to the Google Doc about passwords. So I'm going to highlight the address for this particular article. I'm going to press Control C on my keyboard or Command C on a Mac. And I'm going to go back to my Google Doc and scroll down to the location where I want to place that hyperlink. The text says, for additional information, please consider reading the article titled, Strong Passwords, Nine Rules to Help You Remember Your Login Credentials. Well, that's the information that I'm going to want to highlight and then link with my hyperlink. So once I highlight that text, I can come up to the insert link button on my toolbar. I can click that and then I can paste the link in this box here and click apply. Now when a person is reading my article, they can hover over and click on the link that I created in my article and they can click on the link that will take them to the website that contains the article that I want to highlight. Well, that will about cover the concept that I wanted to talk to you about regarding tables, images, and hyperlinks in a Google Doc. I hope this information has been helpful, and I hope you have a great day.